creating images. Now the images, the image we will use this time is a, an image coming from a Debye Sharer camera, an old one, uh, collecting a, the, the intensity on a film. Okay, so we, and the film was just uh, passed through a scanner. So we will need uh, several corrections and we will see how we can integrate following the circle and get a nice pattern, sufficiently nice to be fitted. Okay, this is a nickel three aluminum sample. Okay, let's go. We close the image and uh, here is the final pattern we want to reach. So we start from the beginning. So I press the new analysis here in MAUD Okay, when you see a circle, uh, it means I press the mouse button. If you see the circle maintain it, this is actually uh, means that uh, I am keeping the mouse pressed. Okay, so first we have to specify the instrument and load the, a, the image. So I just go to the data set, edit. First I if my instrument is not a classical Braga Ventano, I just prefer to specify it. So this will be a Debye Share camera uh, that record only two theta, okay? X-ray tube and is a copper radiation is okay. Then we go actually here and our camera, what we will do is do an integration, but not obtain directly to theta. I prefer to obtain uh, uh, the pattern in, in the original length and then transform it into theta using this angular calibration. So, and here the transformation into theta will be done through a starting value and the radius of the camera. Actually, it is, is a classical the Bashar camera with uh, a camera radius 57.3 millimeter. Okay, while well, you use which unit you prefer, I will use millimeter for the integration, so I put uh, the camera in millimeter. Okay, so we don't need uh, more for the moment. So we go then to data file here, and here we have. Uh, our image manager, so from image. So here start the image manager, as I said in the other tutorial, is image J, and we load our image. So actually I have my image in, where I, in my installation mode, I put all, I extracted, the first time I was running, I extracted my file here, so let's go down and find this film. Oh, it's called, oh, let's name, go files. So let's find file, film, sorry. Okay, film 16. Yeah, this is the image I need. Okay, one problem. The, the unit is not correct here. Uh, I made the scansion several years ago and probably something went wrong. So uh, actually I figured out uh, this here, the image uh, think uh, in the fifth, that this is image is uh, 600 DPI. Instead it was scanned at 180 DPI. So we can correct it. So I go to image property and you see here in this correspond exactly to our 600 dpi so i take my calculator here and i compute uh, my 180 dpi so i invert so this is actually uh, my pixel size in inch so let's copy so i copy and I paste here. Uh, yeah, okay, that's that's it. Perfect. Well, I 
flows the calculator now yeah is uh, more correct in each so first uh, for the image i select the area i want to integrate actually i take also the, the hole because they are very good uh, to establish the the range so just to check uh, i am correct uh, with my uh, calibration angular so then i go to plugins okay and i do pattern from curve image okay if you have a large 2d image like uh, you may have uh, on d uh, uh, on d19 okay neutron at ILR or on wombat in australia okay you may use uh, uh, multi-spectral from curve image and integrate the pattern uh, the image in several pattern uh, split by the angle eta okay that is the angle going around this circle actually here i just don't care about the texture there is a random sample and i just go to obtain only one pattern okay so pattern from curve image now I have to, here is my camera radius. Actually, the camera radius is only used through the integration to calculate the circle. So I have to check. So here is my camera radius. If you don't get the correct value, you put the correct value here. Uh, the center X, uh, well, is you see already is put in the circle here. Uh, so... I know already from a previous one that the real correct one will be 703, something like this. Center Y is actually how it is centered in the Y direction that is going down. Well, let's see, I don't see too much here, but I see my all here, so I will mainly check over there. So. And then the tracker radius here is what control what is drawn here in red. It's just for checking, okay? So let's put, uh, if I just put a bigger value in the tracker, I press the apply, not the OK. Be careful also not to press the enter button. So okay, so I can check you just increasing. Yeah, that is uh, reproducing. So let's go a little bit quicker. 100 okay yeah you see here is reversing and uh, let's go to the end apply yeah maybe i am a little bit too high uh, too low okay so let's change this one to four oh a little bit in there two yeah oh. is it let's try one okay yeah and we can check the other side okay here if we go really to the end it should be 175 let's see yeah you see the circle also is well centered out around this uh, spot here the i am checking the black uh, area not the old uh, in the film okay so let's go again back in the other direction apply yeah, yeah you see this circle as well reproduce it okay well by casualty i just got this so seems like uh, i am well set for the integration actually here better you do better it is but uh, then the final calibration into theta will so i don't check this one I don't want the two theta angle calibrated now because then I can I have the possibility to refine later the center X and the camera radius in this case. Okay? Then I press OK to do the integration. That will be done over the area inside the green rectangle. So I I will put it in the desktop. Okay? Here let's put the name test you don't need to put an extension okay it will be made by mode 
Okay, the, okay, you see, has appeared our file. So I can close, close, and the file was added here. So I can check it. Yeah, this is it. Okay, well, we just close and, and we will get it here. So you see here we have the, we are at the top, uh, is around, uh, it's around, it's not at 180. Oh yeah, here we are not at the zero because uh, uh, remember we integrate from uh, starting before the, the hole, so we need to correct that here in the instrument. Actually, remember the x was 7.03, so in the camera angular, the starting value is actually so that the starting point of integration was at minus 7.03 in, uh, in the in millimeter, okay? So you put exactly the reverse of the x. So let's go back and see if now we have, okay, yeah, you see now we are around zero here and should be at 180 right here, right, okay. So, here is our pattern integrated, okay, and we can just work with it. Yeah, with, so, let's, uh, this, the face here is a nickel, nickel tree aluminum. I will load it uh, from uh, using, from a sieve. Actually, I don't remember where I put the sieve, but I have one, I, well, I can use a, 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 a MAUD file parameter file in which these are in C format so I can load the file from there so I have one also here so let's see inside the film film one dot file okay let's see yeah there is one nickel tree aluminum choose okay I have to do a few things I will just check, uh, so I go here, the only particular thing of the nickel 3 aluminum is uh, actually is uh, ordered, disordered, and here let's say, uh, so I have nickel 1 is 0 7, and actually I have the aluminum 2, if you look at x, y, z, is on the same side, okay, but the occupancy total occupancy should be 1, okay? So actually aluminum 2, I specify here that uh, his occupancy is equal to, I go down, I take nickel 1, uh, where is the occupancy nickel 1 here, so is equal to the occupancy of nickel 1 times minus 1, so minus the occupancy of nickel 1, okay? Let's check if nickel 1 is didn't work. I don't say occupancy of, oh, not minus one, uh, is equal, yeah, uh, one minus the occupancy of uh, nickel one. Sorry, okay, now let's check. If nickel one is zero seven, aluminum two is zero three. Okay. Correct. Then the formula is nickel three aluminum. So there are always three times nickel atom respect to the aluminum. So if you do well, you put all the equation to uh, for the site, etc. We will get also that. Uh, this is the second side position, so the 0, 0, 0, and actually uh, this one, uh, the aluminum 1 plus the nickel 2 should be 1, so it is for the moment, okay, but uh, I prefer to bound it, so I specify the occupancy of nickel 2 as before is equal to the occupancy of aluminum 1, minus 1, plus 1, okay, 
set bound curse. Okay, so now if I change, let's put 07 also on this one, it will be 03. Okay, now I want to refine only one occupancy because uh, the, the last equation I need uh, is the one who specified that we have three nickel atoms respect to the one aluminum. So if you put all the equation, as I said, you will end up uh, having an equation in which uh, the aluminum one is just equal to three times nickel one, the occupancy of nickel one, minus two. So let's put it here. So occupancy of aluminum one is equal to the occupancy, okay, aluminum one times three minus two. Set bound, close. Okay, let's verify. So now, if I put 0, 07 for the nickel 1, nickel 2 will be 0, 09, so you we see the quanti quantity in the cell, so you see we have three atoms in the cell. Aluminum 1 is 0, 1, and aluminum 2 is 0, 09, so you see we have one aluminum atom also. So uh, it corresponds 3 to 1. And also nickel 1 and aluminum 2, the occupancy is 0, 3 plus 0, 7. And aluminum 1 plus nickel 2 is 1 also the occupancy. So I put the correct formula. Actually, one uh, uh, particularity. Um, I actually made uh, that uh, nickel 1 is the one I can refine later. Aluminum 2 is bound to nickel 1 and nickel 2 is actually bound to aluminum 1 and aluminum 2 is bound to nickel 1. Be sure always to bound uh, uh, an atom to one atom before. So I don't bound aluminum 1 to nickel 2 uh, because the way it works the program, uh, if uh, it will check uh, first aluminum 1 and then check nickel 2, so uh, do, and is, it is better always to link one to one before. And also be sure do not create a circular reference, something like at the end you bounce, because in that case, uh, mouth will enter in an endless loop, okay? Modifying all the atom. Now, we have finished all the B starting B factor, okay, well, we will care later for this. Okay, so uh, let's check again the instrument, if everything was uh, okay. I actually prefer, as an error, I don't need a two theta, two theta offset error here, so under error, and I, remo I can remove the parameter, just to be sure I will not use it because the 2 theta shift is actually controlled by the camera, by the starting value in the camera calibration. So will only be a duplicate. So then uh, I have something else, so a Cagliotti here, option. I prefer this, okay, the, the instrument resolution Broadening function is coming from another kind of instrument. So this one normally doesn't have uh, in the Debye Sherry we don't have asymmetry because we integrate it around the circle. And uh, okay, for the moment we well actually I have the value for the R theta the maximum uh, for the Cagliotti for this instrument. Let's take them uh, here, what is this? Is a mild file, so you see we have the recalculate. So I will take just this. Uh, so these are like U V W. So is the so the first is the constant value. The second is the the one varying in tangent theta, and the third one is varying in tangent 
the data. Okay, so okay, so we have the value for our estimate. Well, we don't care about the Gaussianity. We don't have a pattern, so and also this is just an example. Okay, so let's go. Ah, we we need to limit in two theta. Yeah, I don't want to hit okay. This we can remove. I well, it's better to go here from approximately ten degrees to one hundred seventy, right? We will not fit uh, this all here, so let's go from 10 to 170. So in any case, we take all the range. So let's do a computation. Uh, yeah, I have done the computation pressing here. Intensity here is too low. Let's uh, just get a little bit more intensity. The fraction instrument, here it is. Oh, let's go below that. Oops, too much. Uh, okay, and actually, it's better to increase the background. Uh, this one is higher. Okay. So you see the peak correspond. Actually, if we want to check uh, what is the, I go to atomic structure and uh, the nickel three, and I will check. Let's put a step like zero point one. Let's see if it is more. Oh, let's see more ordered. Completely ordered, like this one. Okay, so let's start just yeah. Okay, let's start from a value like this one. Hmm. Well, no. Uh, the background is a little bit strange. So, or we use an interpolated background, or we put some Gaussian function here to model it. So let's go with the Gaussian function. So we add, uh, we put a more complex uh, background. So I go to dataset, background function, and first I add two other parameters here. So just to have a, oops, I was double clicking. So just to have a something four degree. Then we go to background peak. And actually, I would like to add one peak here. Probably we, we will need a very large one here. Then another one here. If you want, you can even add uh, one there. But uh, we hope the our function will take care of that. So I have to add uh, three peak. If you want to change the name, just to while well, I change the first, so you see peak. Background one. Okay, so we will recognize it in the list later. Okay, so let's see. The, I put the first one which position? Uh, so position, let's say the first one I put here is actually at uh, 25 degree. So here you can control the peak in 2 theta. And also, if you have a peak in two dimensions, like uh, when you work in ETA or work, uh, we have several patterns for different chi, and you have the background that is changing in chi, then you can also put some uh, bump in chi and two theta or whatever. Actually, we have only one pattern, so we just work with the first four values. We will not use it. Uh, here is sufficient with eta zero is just a Gaussian peak. So and uh, we put a little bit larger. The intensity normally here we have to put a high value to just see it. Okay, let's take the second. We put that uh, something like 11, 12, around 10. OK, 
okay round the starting point there high is also here bigger I just start from uh, random value and a little bit larger the first one here is something larger okay and then a very large one here what angle is is about 75 here so we go to the third one ah yeah so third one so a smaller position 75 and go with uh, 5 okay done okay let's refresh just to be sure uh, the value has been taken let's compute okay yeah you see one peak here one here and another there okay uh, I will prefer the, to adjust them a little bit uh, manually so to avoid surprise by the program data so let's first adjust also maybe the background I put the background that goes up, up here oops too much let's decrease it Ah, yeah, so you see we are already okay with this peak here, so I don't need to change that one. But here I need a, a little bit. Uh, so you see, there is the peak background. So let's increase the intensity. Big step, uh, 10,000. Oops. Well, actually we need it a little bit larger. In one degree step. Go back here. Ah. Okay. Now maybe we go to the third one, not the second. Oops. Here. So we need to increase it. And this will be very large. Let's put a little bit higher and we enlarge. Okay. Well, to be the more I work uh, manually, less problem I will have in the refinement later. So I prefer really to do it much more here. Okay, uh, this. Now, I first it's time to say what we have done. So I save actually in the desktop. Uh, with the same name normally I use as the data file, so I click on test and actually on the Mac he, will, he just changed me to par exactly as I want. Okay, here it is. So I save the analysis, so if anything goes wrong I can reload it and, and, rest and not uh, lose all the work I have done. Now, uh, okay. The first thing we can do is uh, just let's try to let the program refine it. So I go to the wizard, just do a quantitative analysis, press go, and watch the fitting. Uh, yeah, seems like it's going sufficiently well. It was for the background, it was going correctly. We have one problem actually. You see the intensity, the this one is not fitted correctly, so it's a little bit too high and the intensity, experimental intensity is lower. And if you check, it's around uh, 60,000. Oh, I was plotting linear here just to, to show the problem. Uh, normally I plot in square, but here is for this example. Okay, yeah, normally the is in square root. Okay, that is here, but here I prefer 
to plot uh, just uh, during the working linear to see problem to see if I have a problem with the saturation. Okay, you know Fermi normally saturate and also they are quite slow starting with photo. So we have to correct with the sigma like function. Okay, uh, let's go here under instrument edit intensity calibration. So here we have different intensity calibration, experimental intensity, if you have a reference pattern polynomial, uh, these are uh, intensity calibration for uh, use it uh, Dubna, use it uh, Los Alamos or IPMS for the time of flight. Okay, we actually need, uh, so we have a saturation one, one that will just cut the intensity over a certain value. This is for image plate, for example, that saturate at uh, 65 and something, okay, or uh, whatever. Uh, but actually, I prefer the fin calibration because this doesn't really cut, but instead it makes a, a sigma function. So fin calibration, option, okay. Well, the formula is written here. Actually, there is an error in this uh, here, just in the, in the writing of the formula. This is the intensity of the film is equal to A is the first coefficient, so 0, B is the second, 1, C is the third, 2, A is the third, the 3 here, oh, D, sorry, is the 3, and uh, E is the fourth one. And actually, X, the intensity, theoretical intensity is X, okay? So there is not this intensity theoretical inside the mild computation. So I corrected in for the new version that uh, E theoretical should be uh, here with where the X is, okay? And also, the I will put some more uh, meaningful parameter here, starting parameter, because this uh, doesn't really... So the first one, what value we should use here, actually? So, for A, actually, this correspond to the saturation value. So the saturation you saw is around 50,000, okay? Approximately there. So A normally is the saturation value. Then the second coefficient, b, okay, this is a little bit uh, more strange, but normally is around between 6, 5 and 6 or whatever. Just let's put, uh, for example, 6, okay. The third one is important. Here is the one who scale uh, the two. So let's put, uh, this should be something in this range, 1 minus 10 minus 5. The third one here is D. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so this one is D, and this one should be normally around 1. Okay, so it means uh, it's linear. And the third one you can leave 0. It's actually like a background, uh, but uh, in our case, if the film has a something always starting from a certain value. But uh, it correlates a lot with the background function, so we will leave zero and we will not refine it. Actually, we can refine this function during the refine, okay? And you will see it's quite efficient. Oh, sorry. If you want to check what our formula is like this one, so you see is actually going up linearly at the beginning and you see that uh, uh, 40 corresponds to 10. If we change, for example, our here, we put 2 instead of, uh, okay, let's plot function. You see now actually is going up uh, quicker than the other one. You see this one at 100 was uh, something more than 40, now is going to nearly 100, okay? Let's close, let's go back to one. So that one control 
So if you put a too high value, you will get uh, just something going up too much. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. So, okay, he has already done, and the background is actually a little bit, a bit low. Uh, oh, okay, but we try to refine. Let's see. So it's under diffraction instrument. Uh, angle. Uh, did we refine? Yeah, it was refining the calibration start. You see now it's minus 7.01. Okay, that is bad. In this case, uh, we didn't refine the calibration radius. If you have a standard in which you fix the, you know very well the cell parameter, then you can fix the cell parameter, not refine it, and instead refine the calibration radius. Let's go to our thin calibration. So we will refine this parameter. So not the last one, okay? Well, if we want, we can refine also the last one, but I found always too much correlated with the background function. So let's go. Uh, yeah, you see he has already, and you see now the calibration is much better. You see the intensity now, like this two peak, it is uh, more properly computed. Okay, so now the intensity are much better. That's uh, well. Before to do another cycle, I prefer to refine all parameter I need at the end. So we have already this one. Uh, we are refining all the parameter for the background. Yeah, you see here. With the wizard. Uh, the program decided to refine these three parameters also for the peak background, but not the Gaussian because it was set to zero. If you put a value different from zero, he will refine it. Set parameter is refined. So actually, what I want to do is, okay, crystalline, microstrain. I want to refine also the nickel one occupation. So just to, to refine the order disorder for this cycle. Well, the B is actually negative, so, but uh, we don't have a perfect computation in this case. Okay, let's go. Okay, 11. Let's do another cycle just to see if it is uh, okay. It doesn't go down too much. So you see the RW is quite good. But actually, it's better to check the one with no background because we have a quite a high background. This is higher. Okay, we don't have a, a the sigma is not computed actually correctly. I guess not because this is coming from a film, so we don't measure photon. So actually, it is, doesn't have a sigma or goodness of it doesn't have a good meaning. Okay, well, this is. Uh, we can do a little better, but it's already, you see, we got, uh, for our case, where is the 93? Okay, so this is our occupancy for the nickel one. Okay, so this is all. Uh, if we check uh, the intensity calibration, in calibration, you see it was going 51. Ah, this one was going to 9. 133 and this uh, okay this value should be al always around one because there is one path that should be linear in it okay then you can just save and everything is done